Well, the time has come, as it does every year, for me to make the video I am most reluctant to make. The worst country music of the year. I tell all the haters to f now, as this channel has grown, I like doing this less and less because I have become a creator and not just a critic myself. And you're like, it takes a lot to put things out there into the universe. But you know what they say, if it's enraging, it's engaging. So let's get those clicks. A lot has been said in recent years of the genre finally moving on from bro country. But then along came Where the Country Girl's At, a song that is just firmly planted in 2012. Where the country girl's at, where they gonna be, the ones that like to dance. Now, I really shouldn't be sitting here expecting a ton of depth from Trace Adkins. This is the man that has brought us Honky Tonk, Badonka Donk. Lord have mercy, how she even get them bridges on? And made an entire puppeteered video of Brown Chicken, Brown Cow. Singing Brown Chicken, Brown Cow. A song whose only reason for existing is just to make a pun on the sex noise. Bow chicka bow wow. He's got the truck shined up. He's got his smell good on. You gotta love a cologne reference being called smell good because never use two syllable words where you can use two one syllable words. Luke Bryan just kind of adds some cheesiness into the whole mix, but it's really Pitbull that takes this song over the top. He's just looking for the country girls in them Daisy Daisy Dukes, and unfortunately, Jessica Simpson was not here to oblige, so he's just still asking where the country girl's at. I actually low-key admire Pitbull's determination to break into country music. He did that collaboration with Jared Neiman back in the day, a remix of I Could Drink To That All Night, complete with like disco hula hooping in the video. Then he did a collaboration with Blake Shelton for that song, Get Ready. <laughs> And now he is on the all-time classic, Where the Country Girl's At. Get me there fast, where the country girl's at. In some ways, I think the countryest song Pitbull's ever made was his collaboration, Timber, with Kesha. He's going down, going down, yelling timber. And speaking of Kesha, let's get to the inevitable fancy-like mention of this video. Yeah, we fancy like Applebee's on a day night. Which isn't actually going to be the main mention of Walker Hayes because as much as I don't love that Fancy Like is the country song of this year with the same thumping foundation of bass that I really don't prefer in my country music at the end of the day I do think it's a kind of charming lyric about having a like very middle tier suburban date night and if there's a Walker Hayes song that I feel like we should be picking on this year it's either just like the EDM monstrosity that is you girl I don't want Stop looking at you, girls. Everybody. Or my personal least favorite country stuff. Country stuff, country stuff. I like country stuff. This song is literally just Walker Hayes listing a bunch of things that he likes or things that make him country. Such as shooting ducks and bucks, mud tires on my truck. He also references green tractors, grits, and even the Dukes of Hazard. So maybe I should have saved my Jessica Simpson joke for this section. <laughs> This song has had a kind of believability issue for me because nothing about Walker Hayes screams that he really loves this dirt road, backwoods, country lifestyle. I mean, this is a dude in skinny jeans and Jordans with a kind of trendy youth pastor dad thing about him. Like it kind of takes a suburbanite to know a suburbanite and I feel some kinship with Walker Hayes on this front. But if I tried to make a song like Country Stuff and just claim my allegiance to tractors, I think you guys would see through it. That said, Walker Hayes has made it kind of hard to dislike him this year with just how good humored he's been about fancy like blowing up. He definitely understands how polarizing he can be and that makes it hard to be too annoyed with him. Plus, it always brings me great joy to just remind people of the existence of one of his early songs before he was a star, Pants. I just like that that's a song. Now, a lot of artists saw how much success Fancy Like was having thanks to TikTok and they were like, I want in on that, sign me up. And I feel like there's a whole little category of songs that were trying to get TikTok clout and it didn't work. Stuff like New Truck by Florida Georgia Line. I got a new truck, I got a new ride. And it just sounds super juvenile to me, like it's produced at a carnival or something. The sound of this song seems like a toddler singing, I got a new truck, not like a guy cruising in a new Silverado saying, I got a new truck. The most transparent fancy like copycat had to be Redneck Be Like by Thomas Rhett. Crack open a cold one and then redneck, redneck, redneck be like one. 
This one came complete with Thomas Rhett doing a dance a la Walker Hayes, but then also crossed with the kind of confusion of putting it out during an era called Country Again, where Thomas Rhett's big hit was about how, man, it feels good to be country again. In hindsight, it doesn't look like this was a big single that got pushed as maybe just an experiment for Thomas Rhett, but still. I also felt like there's something a little bit juvenile, maybe just from the counting in Kane Brown's One Mississippi. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three shots of whiskey. Now, if you're in the right mood, this song can kind of feel like a jam, but I just feel like One Mississippi, Two Mississippi, Three Shots of Whiskey, like six months after One Margarita, Two Margarita, Three Margarita Shot. It, it's just kind of like audacious. I mean, bravo, it's working for them, but I'm like, really? Maybe someone should make it simpler and just count to three or count to four. Cover Feist's one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, tell me that you love me more. And it'll be a country hit, guaranteed. Speaking of which, when you're listening to the song One Beer by Hardy, which I love, does anyone else fixate on the plight of Left Out number four? Where it says one beer turns into a lit cigarette, burning into a two beer buzz, three beers turns then to five, then six, and a love drunk kiss in the back of that truck. What about four, huh? What about four? Or is that just me? I think it's just me. Good. Good to know. And then the other music that kind of felt like a juvenile sugar rush was Nico Moon's album. This album starts with a song called No Sad Songs where he's like, I don't want to hear no sad songs. And it's the same album that includes like, I just want to have a good time. We just trying to catch a good time. And I will say this album accomplishes that effectively. It is just relentless in its determination to not think of anything negative, to only think of the positive to such an extent that I got sad. Again, is that just me or is that you too? It's like a little too proud of itself for being kind of dumb and just about a party. And you know, to me, that is like robbing country music of the whole thing that makes it so great, which is being real. But then there was a good amount of music that kind of needed some energy and needed some of those Sugar Rush vibes because it was so blah. The main example of which was Danny Shay's whole album for Good Things. Said some things I ain't proud of. I wish I could take back. Now look, Danny Shay can sing and they can perform. I will always vouch for their talent. And there's this one song on this album called You that I really like. However, this album just sounds like incompleted pop demos. Like, I was really surprised when I heard it, of just like, this is all you're gonna do? You're not gonna add more instruments into this? You're not gonna add any more specific lyrics into this? It just felt literally basic. Like, it literally just didn't have enough going on in it. Which made it feel metaphorically basic to me. Like, it really was like a Magnolia section of a Target and a Brene Brown book club luncheon got put inside an essential oil diffuser together. But that's kind of Danny Shay's brand, and they do kind of own it. Now, someone whose brand it wasn't until this year was Parma Lee, who had their hit with Blanco Brown, Just The Way. I love you just the way God made you, girl, he don't make a and this song actually came out a while ago, but it really peaked in 2021. And to me, it'll just always be funny that the same band that released that kind of lecherous spring break song called Hot Damn Alama about wet t-shirt contests on spring break has now turned around and made this Today Show friendly anthem, I love you just the way God made you. Specifically if you're in Panama and have had implants. Now, when I said I liked that song, The Good Ones, a few videos ago, a lot of y'all in the comments were like offended that I like something by Gabby Barrett but I do. However, Footprints on the Moon is not one of those things. You know, she came in third place on American Idol, and to me, this song feels like one of those cheesy season seven of American Idol, chase every rainbow type finale songs. This is my love. About fighting for your dreams and continuing to work for it because, hey, there's footprints on the moon. No, I understand what the song is going for, but I think you gotta have some gravitas and some life experience for a song like that to land. Although, what am I saying? Hannah Montana recorded The Climb and we all like that. I guess I just think it feels cheesy and there's just way too much production on her voice. For what is supposed to be kind of a more stark ballad moment. And another one that just felt kind of blah to me, and this hurts me to say more than anything in the video, was Casey Musgraves' Star Crossed. I've been a Casey Musgraves fan from day one. 
I reviewed her first album and interviewed her that cycle. Pageant Material was my number one album of all of 2015. <laughs> and as the whole world loved Golden Hour, and I completely get why and felt it was kind of like shimmery and accessible and sweet, I was sitting there wishing for like a touch more of that acerbic wit that I had fallen in love with and like the country or production of her early material. And there was a part of me that was definitely hoping Starcross would be a step back into that direction, but she definitely went way further into the pop direction. But instead of kind of the hopeful feeling of Golden Hour, this was really a sad, often kind of joyless album. There was certainly a lot of style in the visual presentation, but it just didn't hit. The album really kind of ran together, and except for a few standout moments, like Camera Roll, which was really good and specific, it just didn't really hit for me, but it's okay, I still love Casey. Now I know there was a ton of controversy around this album because the Grammys said it couldn't compete as a country album. And I personally think that was the right call on the Grammys part because this does sound like a pop album to me, but it only is a fair decision if they apply the same scrutiny to all these other things. Like, it's not any more pop than Dan and Shay's good things or like half of Walker Hayes' stuff. But why am I talking about news? This is just a stupid worst video. Still, no album was more weird and confusing and just truly not good than Billy Currington's Intuitions. Well, I Recollect, baby, that was I have no so idea what this album was going for. It's like Billy Currington listened to Sam Hunt for the first time and kind of that drawn out, like sad, disaffected, talking R&B style that he has. Phone calls go to voicemail and the text didn't say. And then after that, he played a Silk Sonic record and was like, ooh, listen to that sexy R&B. Leave me with distraction. And then he found a producer most known for working with Dr. Luke and was like, hey, this is gonna be the sound that puts me back on the map. And I'll never give up, never give up now. So don't you ever give up. Like it's just genuinely strange to think of how mature some Billy Currington songs are early on in his career, like must be doing something right. And then when he's 47 years old to kind of turn around and be making these lusty on the prowl R&B tracks. Like on Distraction, he says, yeah, baby, leave me with distraction. You know that I want action, so take me back to last night in LA. <laughs> and I'm just like, what? Aren't you the person that sang Good Directions and Collard Greens? <laughs> like, I actually hate the idea of being one of those people that says an artist has just gotta stay in their narrow little box and they can never change, but it felt pretty out of left field. Maybe that's something with the name Intuitions, because that's what happened when Jewel released Intuition, and we all turned around years later and said, that was actually a good song. Will that happen with Billy Currington's Intuitions? I doubt it. Especially because the writing is just not that good on this album. There's just some really weird lyrics. There's a song on here called Moon and Back where he says, I love you to the moon and back, but right now the moon ain't where you're at. I still love you to the moon and back, but right here with me ain't where you're at. Leaving at dawn, I will be waiting on the sun to be shining on you. I love you to the moon and back, but right now the moon ain't where you're at. Oh, I love you till the moon and back. I'm still on track. What does any of that mean? Right now the moon ain't where you're at? It's like, well, yeah. You know, what, what would it mean for the moon to be where she was at? I don't know, like, I don't know what I'm supposed to be taking away from that chorus, but there's just a few moments on this album where you're like, this is not hitting the way I feel like it's supposed to be hitting based on how it sounds. Anyway, just a weird album. I feel like it just arrived, no one talked about it, and then we all kind of forgot about it, but yeah, it's got to be on a worse list for 2021. Like, that's it. I'm sure there's other bad stuff that's out there, but that's all I thought of for this video, and I don't like to put too much time into it. So if you're annoyed that I hated on your favorite artist, I've probably said a lot of good things about them in some prior video on the channel. Contrary to what you might think from this video, the vast majority of my content is very positive. I love country music. That's the only reason I bother to review it, because you talk honestly and pay attention to things that you love. Uh, if you're new here, hit subscribe and stick around for a bunch more country music content coming up this year. Bye, y'all.